light modular delayed enveloper model HDI. H being for half space or half rack. I've heard some people call it whatever you want. Um, it is super cool and brings a little bit of the old East Coast flavor in with attack, decay, sustain, and release envelopes, and a whole lot more being uh, both a Buchla format module and also from our friends at Northern Light Modular. It's never just going to be vanilla. Uh, let's take a look at what this is. When you first approach it, I mean, even when I first approached it, I thought, wow, this is, uh, I don't understand. It's really complicated. It's actually not. It reminds me of everything in the Buchla ecosystem where you go, what does all this do and how do I figure this out? And then once you figure it out, you go, oh, that was super simple. This is exactly the same. Um, and we're just going to walk through it real quick and make sense of it all. And you'll see, oh, very straightforward, actually. It's very well designed and easy to grok. Here's how this section looks down here outside of this one labeled delay we'll ignore that you see it's delay right because it only affects the right side but on both left and right you have attack decay sustain release works exactly how you'd expect the nice thing is you have basically in a quarter space what takes a full space of 281e to do and has uh, mostly the same feature set and does a whole lot of other cool stuff in there on top of it and is easier to set up than dealing with the or diode mixing section at the bottom. So if you just need some really cool envelope action that does some crazy random stuff as well as very controllable straightforward stuff including your East Coast ADSR, this is the likely choice for you. Um, but let's just go and look at it. As already pointed out, ADSR is down here. Very simple to understand with the four potentiometers. You have your of start of event or trigger inputs here on orange jacks as one would expect with Buchla stuff and then each of them also has the blue banana out for the positive going envelope so whatever you set here comes out here and whatever you set here comes out here and then you have an inverted version so separate ADSR again or just AD if you turn off sustain on either side you can just turn it off and you get an AD envelope just like one would expect You'll get the normal out here and the inverted output here, and that's the same for each side, right? And then here you have this very curious section, both, and then inverted both. And this is basically just a max or min, and that just takes much like a 281 eased or section. It takes both of these envelopes, and the maximum comes out here. So whichever is higher in a given point, that is the voltage that is present here. Basically, you could think of it, if that doesn't make sense to you, the max part is it's just mixing the two together and the higher voltage from either side is what's present here so if this guy is at 8.2 volts and then this one rises up to nine you're gonna get nine volts out of here as it goes to 8.3 8.4 so it'll follow whichever is higher and this guy is whichever is lower out of the inverted ones pretty simple to understand um we are going to connect a 251 each sequence that has three triggers and then a gate and you'll see why because you can set up rule sets in here that change the behavior of the envelopes according to whether you have a trigger coming in or a gate. And so we'll do that now. This is the timing sequence, the pulse out of the 251E. Again, the first three will be triggers followed by a fourth gate. So that goes to our start input as one would expect. And then we have this blue guy normal output. That's just our envelope out. And we will listen to our lovely model 28T trisolator it is currently connected into the pole mixing filters there'll be a video about that later but not uh, not in this section but it's just basically opened up all the way so that we can hear it and now if we send in we can either start either side with a start button or remotely with this but if we hit that you see it fires the envelope so if our decay is up higher you get that all right just does whatever is here if you have a sustain with a release same thing but we're going to use attack and decay and pretty short because it makes it easier to see on the scope and on the scope we're going to have the green trace will be our trigger event coming from the 251 e so you'll see the gate or the trigger here on the uh in green and the actual envelope being generated will be in red so here we go very easy to see when it's yellow it's when the events are overlapping so if we increase the attack 
this is the gate. So green is our pulse or gate. And then the envelope is red. Here comes a trigger. The trigger happens, immediately you get the AD, and here's the gate. You'll see it just ignores the gate part for now, <laughs> in the way we have it set up. Looking at playing with more of the features, we'll look at repeat. Pretty easy to understand. You currently have no repeat, so it's just trigger comes in and it repeats. Now, if we have a trigger and we add one repeat, I think that might be one, I'm guessing. And I got it right. We have the initial one that's always there. And I've added one extra one, which is an exact duplicate because it's the same thing according to these controls. And as soon as you hit the decay, it fires. Now watch what happens when we get to the uh, gate. One more trigger. And then this next one will be a gate. You'll see the first one will fire and it wastes the end of gate. And then the next one goes. So in gate events, the repeat doesn't start until the gate has finished. Here's a trigger. You get both ADs at the same time, or right after each other. End of gate, fires the next one. Pretty easy. If I add an additional AD, trigger, and then you get your three cascading. And then you see what happens here. End of gate, I get the final two. This is a perfect time to point out, moving the banana cables here, when the entire sequence of events has ended at all times, no matter what you program into, the rule is when the entire sequence is ended, so your attack, decay, sustain, release, and all repeats, then you get an end of all events, not just end of one cycle, end of all events, pulse. And as you can notice, as a wise Buka pilot, they are all bridgeable with your shorting bars and you can do all kinds of cool stuff we'll look at in just a little bit if you extend the amount of repeats or the time of the envelope so either increasing attack or decay beyond the point where another trigger can um, will overlap the subsequent trigger the fresh trigger will kill off or stop the sequence and what happens then is this you will never get the end of full cycles of events pulse. This will never fire now because we never get to having our original attack decay plus the additional two I've programmed in. So if I remove one, I might get it. Might be too long. Nope, I got it. So there's our two. New trigger or gate in this case, waits the end of the gate. There's the second one. Trigger. Two ADs. Trigger. I can see if I can butt it right up against the edge there. Just increase the decay a little bit. There's our gate. End of gate it fires. Trigger. We got two in there. New trigger fires. You see it's actually just sliced off the very end because a trigger comes in and it just starts over. Very cool. If we shorten these up, we can add a bunch of repeats, get a little trill, add some more. So remember the behavior repeats always follow at the end of the gate. So here when we hit the gate on this next one, wait to the end of the gate, and then it puts in the subsequent ones. Now we have the inverted output. We can play around with that by simply I'm going to remove the trigger so you can get a look at what it looks like. And I'm going to turn down the amount of repeats here. We'll look at the inverted out and we'll listen to it on the filter. So again, green is now our inverted output. See it at rest, it goes all the way to the top. 
And it's just a mirror image of the envelope you've programmed. We'll get rid of all repeats. Throw some sustain in, there was our gate. A little bit of release. There's our trigger events. Here comes the gate. All right, exactly what one would expect. Very cool. Here I'm using it obviously to manipulate the filter in the other direction. You can do whatever you want with it. Use it for funky panning effects or anything you want. We will go back. Let's open that up a bit more. Put this back onto the timing event, the pulse or gate. And now we have the delay aspect. Again, delay right. So we have a center detent. So the pot does two things. Again, it's digital control over your analog voltage outputs. And we can still have repeats if we want, but it's clearer if I don't do them at the moment. We'll make a nice tight AD. Oh, let's get rid of our sustain and our release there. Simple. One. Now, if I go to the right, it just adds delay. You'll see the trigger. After the gate, let's get rid of that trigger. And then our AD will fire. And that's a fixed delay amount, well, variable according to the potentiometer. But once set, it's fixed to that amount. Watch what happens when we hit our gate. Same thing, right? So it hits the trigger, you fire the AD after the given amount of time. The, the gate, uh, five volt sustained gate is ignored entirely. Here it comes. Trigger and gate. So we can either make that less of a delay, tighter, of trigger and AD, like that. Or remove it entirely by going to the center detent again. There it is. Now, if we go to the left, you have variable delay and it randomizes, I shouldn't say variable, you have randomized delay. So there's a trigger event, here comes another one. And there's our gate barely noticeable. Let's crank that up a little bit. So now we're going to have a wider window of possible delay times. There was quite tight. You can see trigger AD rather late afterwards. And now it's a new value gate, but still the trigger another different value. So here we have a wide range trigger AD completely randomized. And then this gets into interesting, uh, spots when you add repeats. So I think let's just add a couple in there. And you'll note here at the end of the gate, we get our repeats again. And we're already getting into some uh, very unpredictable territory because you get your trigger and whatever the delay time is between each is varied each event. So you have the trigger, which cut off this one because a new trigger event starts the cycle over again. So trigger comes in, you get your AD or, or envelope of, uh, event. And then the next one is also delayed by a variable amount. And the next one is another variable. So you can see how tight these are versus that one. So these three will not be the same. And this last one got cut off by the new trigger event. So you're already looking at some very unpredictable uh, envelope events. If we throw in, um, I wonder if this makes sense to do here. No, we can try this. The gate ends, fires the next two at any random time. There's our trigger, one, two, three, all three at different times from the preceding event. I hope that's clear. So this, every event following the trigger happens at a delayed amount of time that is random. If you want fixed delay times, it's going to stay continually with that degree of separation. Very little from trigger to event. Decay ends. Oh, here we got a gate though. And this is just fixed. 
We're not done with the tricks yet. What we're gonna do now is look at what happens when we have this firing and going to this side and then using the both output. So let's just patch that in real quick. We're going to now look at the inverted output for both. So min of both. This is our both output. And uh, we're not gonna use the sequencer at all. We're just gonna bridge end of event to start to trigger this side and then end of this one to trigger this side. So it'll go in a loop of them cascading to each other. And in order to make this evident, what we're, eh, let's do sustain, why not? Put it back, get rid of delay, throw in a bunch of repeats, make this really tight, and then you can launch it from either side. So there's a slight difference in how it ends up sounding. You can have the slower attack, decay, sustain, release first, and then the trills, or the other way around. But we'll just hit this side. At the end. Which sounds a bit different than this. What's cool is we're not done with the tricks. We have this attenuate potentiometer. And what the attenuate does is it attenuates this envelope side only to these both outputs. So this is not attenuated at all by this. And you can tell by looking at the LED, it'll stay f st full strength still, but this one will go down for the trills. So you see it's still full uh, brightness when this fires. As I turn this down, we've now attenuated only the right side to the both outs. Throw the filter on here again. Go full. Because you don't have an external trigger coming in here, uh, sorry, into here, you don't have to worry so much about how you have the duration set for either repeats or any of your envelope settings because it'll cycle through the whole thing because there's no new event coming in because this hasn't been triggered yet. So if this had a trigger coming in, it would stop this, right? So in this case, it's going to do, I forgot what it was, five or six full cycles at the end of it it'll fire off the end of all cycles which then kicks this guy on this guy ends fires off this guy over here so in this case when it's doing its own self cycling oops let's keep the repeats high but turn the timing down you can set pretty much anything and always have the full chain going Again, attenuated. You can then add in variable delay. Or not variable, I keep saying variable. <laughs> variable is, both of them are variable. This one is only variable to the right and then randomized variable to the left. Okay, another thing you can do is loop an AD or ADSR by itself or each one independently. And all you have to do is change the order of this. So what we're going to do is just use a normal um, uh, envelope output. And you take your shorting bar and you stick it in like this. And we'll just do a, eh, that's probably fine. We'll just hit start. And it's just going to loop because at the end of the event, it fires a pulse into its own input. If you want to do the fast stuff again, you do this. Okay. 
And you know, I go, oh, I wish we could have a CB jack for this so you can do this kind of crazy stuff. Well, the 281E does that, so we have a 281E. Go for it. Fun. And then you can do the same thing here. Jump over here. We will, and why not just look at our trigger for fun? And we'll kick this guy off. So we have both our delays and our repeats. Get rid of the randomization. It's behaving just like the right, uh, the left side was. Well, let's throw in some randomized delay. A touch. So this would be really cool for percussive stuff where you could have little trills and crazy drum beats and then use the envelopes either side for increasing decay or acting as axes. There's so much stuff you could do with this. But that's basically how it works. So the quick recap again, two ADSRs, the right side has either a fixed variable delay or fixed time, but whatever it's set to, I shouldn't say fixed, it's variable, but with no randomization. Or with randomization. Zoom that guy in, there we go. Then inverted. Pretty easy to understand, right? Repeat, how many additional repeats are put on top? Repeats are cut off if a new pulse comes in here and starts this whole rule set over again. So according to how everything you have, if, if the rule set of this plus this plus this has not been met, it just cuts it off and starts over anew, which makes sense because it would be a disaster, just a mess otherwise. And of course, both. <laughs> 